In 2018, a woman by the name of Lynn Greenfield came across an article that made her uncomfortable. It was the story of Richard Montanez, the man who invented flaming Hot Cheetos. It was a feel-good story, a poor janitor with a billion-dollar idea, and Lynn Greenfield could hardly believe what she was reading. Richard was a hero, and not just because he invented flaming Hot Cheetos, but because of the inspiration he gave to the millions of people who heard his story. His legacy was a viral sensation, and this made her uncomfortable. You see, Lynn Greenfield isn't just some negative person hating on a good story. She's the real inventor of Flaming Hot Cheetos. After this discovery, Lynn Greenfield contacted Frito-Lay to set the record straight. And this started a chain reaction that led us to where we're at today. But before we go any further, you need to be familiar with Richard's side of the story. And let me warn you, it's heartwarming. In the 1980s, Richard Montanez was a janitor at a Frito-Lay plant outside of Los Angeles. Roger Enrico was the CEO at the time, and he sent out a company-wide videotape encouraging employees to take more initiative and to act like they were owners. Now, while most employees just brushed this off as corporate fluff, Richard took it seriously. He was at a local grocery store when he found himself studying the Frito-Lay products on the shelves. He noticed they were all plain and lacking real flavor. And that's when the idea hit him. The time had come to do a chip with some heat, some real spice. He snagged some plain Cheetos from the factory and he and his wife worked to get the perfect mix of spices until he found the ultimate concoction. Richard had created the first flaming Hot Cheeto in his own kitchen. He jumped on the phone and called the CEO, Roger Enrico. Now the secretary was a bit confused by a janitor calling for a CEO, but surprisingly, she sent his call through. Enrico loved the idea. He told Richard he'd be at the plant in two weeks and asked him to prepare a presentation for the executives. Now, in Richard's own words, he couldn't read or write very well and he had no formal business knowledge, but that wasn't going to stop him. He went to the local library, studied marketing concepts, and prepared 100 plastic baggies with his Cheeto invention. On the day of the presentation, Richard stepped into the boardroom here I was, a janitor, speaking to some of the most highly qualified executives in America. The presentation was going much better than he expected, but just as it was about to end, an executive asked him how much market share his invention could get. Now, Richard had no idea what market share meant, so he spread his arms wide and said, That much market share. Richard's invention turned out to be one of the most successful products in Frito-Lay history, making the company billions of dollars. He quickly rose through the ranks, became an executive, and went on to give many public speeches about his story. He has written multiple books and has a feature-length movie coming out about him. And then the internet made Richard a viral sensation, which ultimately led to an article that came across the eyes of Lynn Greenfield. According to Greenfield, the feel-good story about Richard was a lie. She claims that Flamin' Hot Cheetos was her project, so she got in touch with the company's legal team and let them know what was happening. This triggered a company investigation which concluded with Frito-Lay making this statement. None of our records show that Richard was involved in any capacity in the Flaming Hot test market. Now you might be thinking, okay, so he wasn't involved in the test market, but that doesn't mean he didn't come up with the idea, right? Well, Richard claims that he came up with the idea in a grocery store in California, but according to the investigation, the idea didn't come from California. It didn't even come from the corporate office in Texas. Six former employees said the idea came from corner stores in Chicago and Detroit. Salesmen were noticing that spicy snacks were selling well in that area, so they relayed this information back to corporate, who tasked the project to the marketing department, which ultimately landed on the desk of Lynn Greenfield. But wait a minute. In Richard's defense, he had that big presentation where he pitched the idea of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. 
He describes this dramatic event as having over 100 people, most of whom were top executives of the company. So regardless of where the idea supposedly came from, Richard should have at least 100 people who can come to his defense and verify his story, right? Well, the LA Times tracked down 20 of those executives, and none of them remember this famous presentation. One former project manager was recorded as saying, if that story existed, believe me, we would have heard about it. Now, for the sake of the argument, let's assume that these 20 individuals just have terrible memories. Maybe this presentation did happen, but Richard exaggerated a little, making it seem more dramatic than it actually was. I mean, the man was writing books and giving speeches. It's understandable that he might fluff this up a little. And besides, Richard still has a very important card up his sleeve. The man who first believed in him. The former CEO, Roger Enrico, is a main character in Richard's story. He's the one who sent out the company-wide videotape that inspired Richard. He was the CEO who accepted the call from the janitor. He was the one who planned the famous presentation, and he's the one who approved the development of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. In Richard's latest book, he mentions Roger Enrico by name 60 times. So regardless of these other inconsistencies, Richard has the former CEO as his alibi. But there's just one problem. Roger Enrico wasn't the CEO at the time. His career with Frito-Lay started in early 1991, and this was six months after Flamin' Hot Cheetos were already developed. Enrico passed away in 2016 without ever mentioning Flamin' Hot Cheetos publicly. Now the evidence is clearly stacked against Richard at this point. At the conclusion of the investigation, Frito-Lay came out with this statement. We value Richard's many contributions to our company, especially his insights into Hispanic consumers, but we do not credit the creation of Flamin' Hot Cheetos or any Flamin' Hot products to him. How in the world did Richard Montanez mislead so many people? Well, in order to answer these questions, there's another part of this story that's really important. Do you remember when Richard said he called up the CEO, Roger Enrico, to pitch him his idea? And supposedly, the secretary actually sent his call through? Well, that phone call actually happened. This is that secretary. Her name is Patty, and she vividly remembers Richard calling, but she says this happened in 1993, after Flamin' Hot Cheetos were already on the shelves. So if that were the case, if Flamin' Hot Cheetos were already developed, then what was that phone call about? This is where the story gets even more complicated. The LA Times found a newspaper article about Richard from the early 90s. This was while he was still a plant worker. And the article said that Richard had developed a new snack that was aimed at the Hispanic market. It goes on to say that he even tested recipes and came up with a marketing strategy. Sounds pretty familiar. Well, the article goes on to tell us the name of the product that Richard developed. Flamin' Hot Popcorn. This snack hit shelves in March of 1994 as an extension of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Richard went on to develop an entire line of products called Sabritas, and this was a big project. So Frito-Lay hired this guy as a consultant. His name is Roberto Sochinski, and he remembers Richard. Specifically, and this is important, he recalls Richard designing a marketing strategy with a local network of women hosting Tupperware parties. Now, this was a unique approach, and Roberto, who was hired on specifically for the Sabritas line, remembers it well. Richard talks about the Tupperware parties in his book, but as you might have guessed, he says it was for Flamin' Hot Cheetos. You might be starting to see a pattern here. There seems to be a lot of little nuggets of truth in Richard's story. As far as I can tell, there are three possible explanations to this whole mess. The first is that Richard lied. And I would guess this happened over the span of a few years, maybe a decade. 
Richard slowly started to conflate Flamin' Hot Cheetos with his own true story with these other products. Flamin' Hot Cheetos, Flamin' Hot Popcorn, what's the difference? The second possible explanation is that Richard has memory problems. There's an area of study in psychology called the misinformation effect, and it deals with how easily our memories can be influenced over time. Now, I don't want to speculate too much on this, but in my research, it seems like this could easily apply to Richard situation. Now, the third and last possible explanation is that Richard is telling the truth. When the LA Times article dropped, it caused a PR nightmare for Frito-Lay. A lengthy statement was quickly issued defending Richard, reiterating his importance to the company. And people took this as a win for Richard, saying that the LA Times article was debunked and that Richard was in fact telling the truth. But the only problem is that the statement never addressed the real issue. It danced around the only question that actually mattered. Did Richard Montanez invent Flamin' Hot Cheetos? Additionally, Frito-Lay never raised any issues with the LA Times article. They never asked for corrections or amendments. But regardless, maybe this entire investigation was rigged against Richard. Maybe he did in fact invent Flaming Hot Cheetos. After all, the man is a genius. I'm a genius!